September 5. The Prince, Levites, and Priests. Then the man brought me back to the east gateway in the outer wall of the temple area, but it was closed. And the Lord said to me, This gate must remain closed. It will never again be opened. No one will ever open it and pass through, for the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered here. Therefore, it must always remain shut. Only the prince himself may sit inside this gateway to feast in the Lord's presence, but he may come and go only through the entry room of the gateway. Then the man brought me through the north gateway to the front of the temple. I looked and saw that the glory of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord, and I fell face down on the ground. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, take careful notice. Use your eyes and ears and listen to everything I tell you about the regulations concerning the Lord's temple. Take careful note of the procedures for using the temple's entrances and exits. And give these rebels, the people of Israel, this message from the Sovereign Lord. O people of Israel, enough of your detestable sins. You have brought uncircumcised foreigners into my sanctuary, people who have no heart for God. In this way, you defiled my temple, even as you offered me my food, the fat and blood of sacrifices. In addition to all your other detestable sins, you have broken my covenant. Instead of safeguarding my sacred rituals, you have hired foreigners to take charge of my sanctuary. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says, No foreigners, including those who live among the people of Israel, will enter my sanctuary if they have not been circumcised and have not surrendered themselves to the Lord. And the men of the tribe of Levi who abandoned me when Israel strayed away from me to worship idols must bear the consequences of their unfaithfulness. They may still be temple guards and gatekeepers, and they may slaughter the animals brought for burnt offerings and be present to help the people. But they encouraged my people to worship idols, causing Israel to fall into deep sin. So I have taken a solemn oath that they must bear the consequences for their sins, says the Sovereign Lord. They may not approach me to minister as priests. They may not touch any of my holy things or the holy offerings, for they must bear the shame of all the detestable sins they have committed. They are to serve as the temple caretakers, taking charge of the maintenance work and performing general duties. However, the Levitical priests of the family of Zadok continued to minister faithfully in the temple when Israel abandoned me for idols. These men will serve as my ministers. They will stand in my presence and offer the fat and blood of the sacrifices, says the Sovereign Lord. They alone will enter my sanctuary and approach my table to serve me. They will fulfill all my requirements. When they enter the gateway to the inner courtyard, they must wear only linen clothing. They must wear no wool while on duty in the inner courtyard or in the temple itself. They must wear linen turbans and linen undergarments. They must not wear anything that would cause them to perspire. When they return to the outer courtyard where the people are, they must take off the clothes they wear while ministering to me. They must leave them in the sacred rooms and put on other clothes so they do not endanger anyone by transmitting holiness to them through this clothing. They must neither shave their heads nor let their hair grow too long. Instead, they must trim it regularly. The priests must not drink wine before entering the inner courtyard. They may choose their wives only from among the virgins of Israel or the widows of the priests. They may not marry other widows or divorced women. They will teach my people the difference between what is holy and what is common, what is ceremonially clean and unclean. They will serve as judges to resolve any disagreements among my people. Their decisions must be based on my regulations, and the priests themselves must obey my instructions and decrees at all the sacred festivals and see to it that the Sabbaths are set apart as holy days. A priest must not defile himself by being in the presence of a dead person unless it is his father, mother, child, brother, or unmarried sister. In such cases, it is permitted. Even then, he can return to his temple duties only after being ceremonially cleansed and then waiting for seven days. The first day he returns to work and enters the inner courtyard and sanctuary, he must offer a sin offering for himself, says the Sovereign Lord. 
The priests will not have any property or possession of land, for I alone am their special possession. Their food will come from the gifts and sacrifices brought to the temple by the people, the grain offerings, the sin offerings, and the guilt offerings. Whatever anyone sets apart for the Lord will belong to the priests. The first of the ripe fruits and all the gifts brought to the Lord will go to the priests. The first samples of each grain harvest and the first of your flour must also be given to the priests, so the Lord will bless your homes. The priests may not eat meat from any bird or animal that dies a natural death or that dies after being attacked by another animal. Division of the Land When you divide the land among the tribes of Israel, you must set aside a section for the Lord as his holy portion. This piece of land will be eight and a third miles long and six and two-third miles wide. The entire area will be holy. A section of this land measuring 875 feet by 875 feet will be set aside for the temple. An additional strip of land, 87 and a half feet wide, is to be left empty all around it. Within the larger sacred area, measure out a portion of land, 8 and a third miles long and 3 and a third miles wide. Within it, the sanctuary of the most holy place will be located. This area will be holy, set aside for the priests who minister to the Lord in the sanctuary. They will use it for their homes, and my temple will be located within it. The strip of sacred land next to it, also eight and a third miles long and three and one third miles wide, will be a living area for the Levites who work at the temple. It will be their possession and a place for their towns. Adjacent to the larger sacred area will be a section of land eight and a third miles long and one and two third miles wide. This will be set aside for a city where anyone in Israel can live. Two special sections of land will be set apart for the prince. One section will share a border with the east side of the sacred lands and city, and the second section will share a border on the west side. Then the far eastern and western borders of the prince's lands will line up with the eastern and western boundaries of the tribal areas. These sections of land will be the prince's allotment. Rules for the Prince Then my princes will no longer oppress and rob my people. They will assign the rest of the land to the people, giving an allotment to each tribe. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Enough, you princes of Israel. Stop your violence and oppression and do what is just and right. Quit robbing and cheating my people out of their land. Stop expelling them from their homes, says the Sovereign Lord. Use only honest weights and scales and honest measures, both dry and liquid. The homer will be your standard unit for measuring volume. The ephah and the bath will each measure one-tenth of a homer. The standard unit for weight will be the silver shekel. One shekel will consist of twenty geras, and sixty shekels will be equal to one mina. Special Offerings and Celebrations You must give this tax to the prince, one bushel of wheat or barley for every sixty you harvest, one percent of your olive oil, and one sheep or goat for every two hundred in your flocks in Israel. These will be the grain offerings, burnt offerings, and peace offerings that will make atonement for the people who bring them, says the Sovereign Lord. All the people of Israel must join in bringing these offerings to the prince. The prince will be required to provide offerings that are given at the religious festivals, the new moon celebrations, the Sabbath days, and all other similar occasions. He will provide the sin offerings, burnt offerings, grain offerings, liquid offerings, and peace offerings to purify the people of Israel, making them right with the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, In early spring, on the first day of each new year, sacrifice a young bull with no defects to purify the temple. The priest will take blood from this sin offering and put it on the doorposts of the temple, the four corners of the upper ledge of the altar, and the gateposts at the entrance to the inner courtyard. Do this also on the seventh day of the new year for anyone who has sinned through error or ignorance. In this way, you will purify the temple. On the fourteenth day of the first month, you must celebrate the Passover. This festival will last for seven days. The bread you eat during that time must be made without yeast. 
On the day of Passover, the prince will provide a young bull as a sin offering for himself and the people of Israel. On each of the seven days of the feast, he will prepare a burnt offering to the Lord, consisting of seven young bulls and seven rams without defects. A male goat will also be given each day for a sin offering. The prince will provide a basket of flour as a grain offering and a gallon of olive oil with each young bull and ram. During the seven days of the Festival of Shelters, which occurs every year in early autumn, the prince will provide these same sacrifices for the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the grain offering, along with the required olive oil. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, The east gateway of the inner courtyard will be closed during the six workdays each week. But it will be open on Sabbath days and the days of new moon celebrations. The prince will enter the entry room of the gateway from the outside. Then he will stand by the gatepost while the priest offers his burnt offering and peace offering. He will bow down in worship inside the gateway passage and then go back out the way he came. The gateway will not be closed until evening. The common people will bow down and worship the Lord in front of this gateway on Sabbath days and the days of new moon celebrations. Each Sabbath day, the prince will present to the Lord a burnt offering of six lambs and one ram, all with no defects. He will present a grain offering of a basket of choice flour to go with the ram and whatever amount of flour he chooses to go with each lamb, and he is to offer one gallon of olive oil for each basket of flour. At the new moon celebrations, he will bring one young bull, six lambs, and one ram, all with no defects. With the young bull, he must bring a basket of choice flour for a grain offering. With the ram, he must bring another basket of flour. And with each lamb, he is to bring whatever amount of flour he chooses to give. With each basket of flour, he must offer one gallon of olive oil. The prince must enter the gateway through the entry room and he must leave the same way. But when the people come in through the north gateway to worship the Lord during the religious festivals, they must leave by the south gateway. And those who entered through the south gateway must leave by the north gateway. They must never leave by the same gateway they came in, but must always use the opposite gateway. The prince will enter and leave with the people on these occasions. So at the special feasts and sacred festivals, the grain offering will be a basket of choice flour with each young bull, another basket of flour with each ram, and as much flour as the prince chooses to give with each lamb. Give one gallon of olive oil with each basket of flour. When the prince offers a voluntary burnt offering or peace offering to the Lord, the east gateway to the inner courtyard will be opened for him, and he will offer his sacrifices as he does on Sabbath days. Then he will leave, and the gateway will be shut behind him. Each morning you must sacrifice a one-year-old lamb with no defects as a burnt offering to the Lord. With the lamb, a grain offering must also be given to the Lord, about three quarts of flour, with a third of a gallon of olive oil, to moisten the choice flour. This will be a permanent law for you. The lamb, the grain offering, and the olive oil must be given as a daily sacrifice every morning without fail. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. If the prince gives a gift of land to one of his sons as his inheritance, it will belong to him and his descendants forever. But if the prince gives a gift of land from his inheritance to one of his servants, the servant may keep it only until the year of Jubilee, which comes every fiftieth year. At that time, the land will return to the prince. But when the prince gives gifts to his sons, those gifts will be permanent. And the prince may never take anyone's property by force. If he gives property to his sons, it must be from his own land. For I do not want any of my people unjustly evicted from their property. The Temple Kitchens In my vision, the man brought me through the entrance beside the gateway and led me to the sacred rooms assigned to the priests, which faced toward the north. He showed me a place at the extreme west end of these rooms. He explained, This is where the priests will cook the meat from the guilt offerings and sin offerings and bake the flour from the grain offerings into bread. They will do it here to avoid carrying the sacrifices through the outer courtyard and endangering the people by transmitting holiness to them.
Then he brought me back to the outer courtyard and led me to each of its four corners. In each corner, I saw an enclosure. Each of these enclosures was seventy feet long and fifty-two and a half feet wide, surrounded by walls. Along the inside of these walls was a ledge of stone with fireplaces under the ledge all the way around. The man said to me, These are the kitchens to be used by the temple assistants to boil the sacrifices offered by the people.